Recently I posted a video about my $250 Mac Pro and why I thought it was such a bargain. Hopefully after today's video you'll see why it was in fact a steal. So of all the cheese grater Mac Pros that were made, one of the most coveted is the 2010 6 core Westmere Mac Pro. Because this model uses newer Westmere processors and it has a 6 core processor, it fetches a pretty high price premium, usually around $650 to $700 on eBay. And that's of course with like a 1TB hard drive and 16GB of memory. But here's the thing. See, the 2010 Mac Pro, which has a model identifier 5,1, supports Westmere processors as well as Nehalem processors used on older generations. This includes the 6-core W3680 Xeon that is in the coveted 6-core Mac Pro, and the 2010 is actively supported by High Sierra. On the other hand, the 2009 model identifier 4,1 is limited to Nehalem processors and is limited by firmware to OS X El Capitan. In reality, however, the 2009 and the 2010 are almost identical on a basic system level, the only difference being the firmware identifier, and the dual processor models from 2009 use a slightly different delitted processor setup, so they have to be modified to work with newer litted processors. The single processor models, like I have here, are really even more identical. Luckily, a handy firmware patch exists which allows us in just a few minutes to upgrade the firmware of a 2009 Mac Pro to that of a 2010. So really all you have to do to get this installed is disable system integrity and then run a simple program. Uh, I have a link to an iFixit tutorial that will provide you with not only step-by-step -step instructions, but also the necessary files to perform this operation. It's really, really simple. And basically what this does is update the model identifier in our 4,1 Mac Pro to 5,1, which allows us to upgrade the machine just like it's a 2010 Mac Pro. It will now allow us to upgrade to Westmere processors like that wonderful 6-core and it will allow us to run High Sierra. So I already used the firmware tool on this machine to upgrade it to run High Sierra. Which brings us to our next item, the CPU. As I said in my previous video on this Mac Pro, the quad-core Nehalem Intel Xeon W3520 is a decent CPU. It performs a lot like the Sandy Bridge Core i7s in the 2011 MacBook Pro 15s, and can certainly handle its own in Final Cut, and other production applications. But in my opinion, a Mac Pro should be able to outpace a seven-year-old MacBook Pro. And I googled the processor on eBay, and it's worth about $4. So we're gonna give it a little bit of an upgrade today. Today we're going to be putting a Xeon Westmere W3680 6-core 12 thread, the same one used in the 2010 Mac Pro in this machine. So these processors only cost about $60 on eBay if you do some hunting, so the upgrade is certainly inexpensive. So you can use a W3680, which is identical to what the 2010 6 core uses, but today I'm going to be using a Xeon X5680, which is designed to be used in the dual processor tray as a pair. Despite this, it's identical in performance to the W3680, but if I choose to put a dual processor tray in this machine in the future, I'll already have one of the CPUs I need. The X-Series Xeons work exactly the same as the W-Series, the only difference being that they can be used in a dual setup, but they work just fine in a single setup, and they are about the same cost. So once you get the 2009 firmware upgraded to 5,1 and you get your High Sierra installed, it's a simple CPU swap to get the machine working. Now again, there's an iFixit tutorial linked in the description that will offer very good detailed step-by-step -step instructions, but here's a pretty quick overview of what you have to do. Take off the side plate of the Mac Pro by pulling the lever on the back of the case. Use the tabs to remove the CPU tray. Use a 3.5mm hex allen wrench to unscrew the CPU heatsink. Remove the CPU from its socket.
Replace the old CPU with our new W3680 or X5680. Apply thermal paste to the heat spreader. Cannot believe this. Ugh. I just got like most of the way through filming and replacing the CPU. And then I realized that I didn't have any thermal paste left. So now I'm gonna go to my center to get some thermal paste. I can't believe, how did I not notice? How did I, I don't know how I didn't notice, but I'm going, I'll be back. All right, here we are, out on the road. No, stop that, we're not, we're not doing that, we're not doing that. All right, here we are, time to get some thermal paste. Well, there it is, we got it. And uh, before we get back into it, I'd just like to apologize to everyone watching this video. Um, it's kind of late, it's 7.04 p.m. right now. I waited literally all day for the little screw thing to take off the heat sink to arrive. I ordered it on Amazon and it took forever to get here. So as a result of me waiting that long, this video is going to be really dark because I'm running out of light. So I very much apologize if this video is dark and unwatchable. It was not my intention. Let's go. Reattach the heat sink. Remember, the screws are spring loaded so they will stay in the heat sink. Insert the processor tray back in the case. Close the case. And finally, turn on the machine. Once the Mac Pro is up and running, we have ourselves a whole new machine. This device, to all intents and purposes, is essentially a 2010 Mac Pro at this point. We have firmware that allows the machine to remain supported, as well as use a wider variety of processors, and we have the exact same processor from the 2010 6-core machine that fetches over $650. There are now only two noticeable differences between the 2009 and 2010. So the first is that the 2009, thanks to its Nehalem processor, was limited to 1066 megahertz DDR3 RAM. However, fortunately, the RAM frequency is determined by the processor and not by the processor tray. So now that we're running Westmere processors, we can put 1333 megahertz memory in and it'll run full speed. The only other difference is the older graphics card, but I consider this a non-issue because in both the 2009 and the 2010, you're going to probably want to put a new graphics card in it anyway because both of those cards are pretty old and anemic. Not to mention that we can use the 350 plus savings to put a really nice card in this machine. So after the upgrade, I have to say this machine runs really, really well. So you may remember from my previous video, uh, we had a score of 420 CB in Cinebench R15. Now in our current device, we've done quite a bit better. As you can see, the score is right in the 800 range, which is almost double what we had before. Now that's crazy enough as it is, but I also have to point out that my Core i7-7700 that I use in my gaming desktop scores about 850. So this processor, which only cost $60, remember, is really, really similar in multi-threaded workloads to the Core i7, the $350 Core i7 that I have in my desktop. That's pretty crazy. The value for money on this CPU is is really good. And also that brings our 2009 into a position of being one of the best value Mac Pros and just Macs ever. I mean, for $300, which is the amount of money that I've invested in this computer, and, you know, despite it having a dated graphics card, it's a beast. I'm really, really pleased with how this has turned out. I'm editing this entire video on this Mac Pro and it runs really, really well. I edited that little montage before I recorded the rest of this video, and it just, it works really well. So before we go, I'd like to give a big thanks to SCD Key for sponsoring this video. It's a really cool site where you can get Windows, Windows programs and games with pretty significant discounts. So here on the homepage, you can see we've got Steam, Origin, Xbox, Uplay, PlayStation, PC, gift cards, 
and more. There's a whole lot of options that you can choose from. They've also got really good deals on Office 2016 Professional. Look at this, $35, that's 85% off. And there's a really handy little tool down here which allows you to see exactly how to activate you can activate Windows 10, you can activate Office 2016, it's really, really easy. Now additionally, they've given me a coupon code that you can put right in here, that's in the description, and that'll give you an additional 10% off, and then all you have to do is select your payment. It's really easy and it's really secure. So if you look down in the description below, I've got a link to their website, as well as a promotion code that will give you 10% off if you enter it when you're confirming your order, as I showed you before. So please do check them out and thank you to SCD Keys for sponsoring this video. And with that, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani. My subreddit is also linked in the description below, as well as all the backgrounds that I use on my different computers, so just keep that in mind. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.